Hi, I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service, your family and consumer science agent with New Mexico State University. We are back with our series on small appliance quandaries and figuring out, do we really need that appliance? Or if I already have it, how do I use it and take care of it? So last time we talked a little bit about air fryers. This time we're gonna talk specifically about multi-cookers or what a lot of us refer to as instant pots. Now we hear the term Instapot, which is a brand name. And as we talked about last time, we're not endorsing or talking down any particular brand. We're just providing some educational information for you related to the different types of products that you can use in your kitchen to make sure that they're used safely and taken care of. Because obviously we want you to be good stewards of your resources and your funds. And sometimes that involves either not purchasing something that you can't use, but also taking good care of things that you already have. So when we talk about instant pots, um, they're very versatile. They have a lot of functions uh, on all the different ones. Again, there's a variety of sizes. They're gonna run you anywhere from that $70 range to a $300 range. You might catch them on sale. That's a great thing too. Um, you're gonna wanna really consider the features and the size that you need for your family and what's gonna be the most functional for you. Because it uses high heat temperatures and the moisture together, you can really uh, increase your cooking time I mean, decrease, there you go. Decrease your cooking time, increase your other time. So the idea behind it is you, it's quick to put things together and then it cooks faster than a traditional slow cooker. Now it also, most of them have a slow cooker setting. So if that's something that you like to use, maybe instead of investing in another crock pot, you might choose to use a multi-cooker where you have that slow cooker option or some of these other great functions that you might find. So some of the things you can also use, it works as a pressure cooker. That's the main thing I hear people talk about, just like that old fashioned pressure cooker my grandma used to have that she kept on the stove with a pot of beans in it and they'd cook all day or overnight. Okay, you can do that in a lot less time now by using your multi-cooker. Uh, a lot of people, the rice cooker, you can, it makes a great steamer. It will saute. Uh, you can also, as a warmer, just to keep things warm, keep them in there. People do all different kinds of things in their multi-cookers. And so like we talked about last time with the air fryers, you're going to want to hold on to your owner's manual that talks about your specific model, all of the specific functions. I know it's hard for a lot of us because we should just be able to push the buttons and have it happen like it's supposed to happen. Fortunately, with a lot of these new appliances, because they do have so many features, it's important to read some of the instructions to know what you're gonna get. If you're willing to waste a few things and know, okay, well, I'm just gonna try it and see what happens. The problem with that as well is then you think you remember what you did and the next time you do it, it doesn't work. So reading the instructions, keeping the instructions where you can get to them is gonna be a benefit to you because now maybe all of a sudden you've decided no I really do want to use it as a slow cooker how do I do that what are the settings what are the things I need to work on and while a lot of it seems like well it's really simple you find the button on here that says that and that's what you push this one specifically has things like it tells me there's a soup setting and a meat setting and then we come over here and we've got a rice setting things that you can specifically do that are pre-programmed so most of them are gonna have anywhere from you know, seven to about 20 different pre-programmed things in here. Again, depending on what you wanna make and what recipe you're trying to follow, you may need to make adjustments to that. So those are just some things to be aware of when we talk about your multi-cooker. Think about uh, how to take care of it. We wanna make sure that we're using all the appropriate parts, the things that go with it, that came with it, like we talked about last time. We're gonna unplug it before we go to clean or take anything apart or do anything with it. These are your pieces. Obviously, here's the, the middle. What would be the crock in a slow cooker? Okay, obviously it's, it's metal in most of your uh, multi-cookers. Okay, again, a rack. You put things in and out or you can use it as a cooling rack to set because it's the right size for all of your parts and pieces. And then the important part, I mean, this is important, obviously the technology that makes it run, that makes it do all of your programs and what you want. But the, the real pressure cooker part of it that makes it special, that makes those things go quicker, 
going to happen in the lid. Okay, this is the part that's going to pressurize what you're doing. And then it's going to be important, again, that you read your instructions. Most of them are going to have a slow, regular release that you can set. And I know like with the recipe that went out this last time in the newsletter, we talk about doing your pinto beans in here. And like I said, my grandma used to cook them and they'd be on there, oh, you know, overnight. They should do it all, all night long to have those ready. Or she'd get up and put them on at 7 in the morning so that they would be ready to eat at supper because you got to cook them, you know, for that eight to 10 hours to get that done. You can do those in here in 30 to 45 minutes, but you've got to know when you get to the end, if you're going to do the regular release, you're going to need to allow about 15 minutes just for the steam to release. Most of your pressure cookers, multi cookers are going to have a quick release. It's important to read the instructions and know how to work that because the thing about steam is it's hot and it comes out fast. The big thing you're going to see with these is people getting scalded because they're not using it in a safe manner or they're not following the instructions for how to use it. So those are things that you need to consider and think about in using a multi cooker if that's something that's going to be beneficial to you in your home. This little steam valve. Okay, again, I'm going to show you this one and you can see, I think this is very handy. This one actually has on the lid those basic instructions for how to use it so that when you get ready to do it and you're like, oh, I can't really remember, you haven't used it very much, you haven't had a lot of practice, you can look at those instructions and remember how to release your steam valve or do your quick release. This is removable, okay? You're gonna want, again, follow the instructions in your manual to take it off and put it back on correctly, but you're gonna wanna clean this. Every so often, after every use, depending on what you're making, you're going to want to make sure that this stays clean because there's a lot of parts and pieces in here to make this work. And if food particles get stuck up in here, you kind of have a mess. So that's a piece that you're going to need to make sure that you clean. Most of these, this lid is dishwasher safe. You can run it through the dishwasher. Again, double check your instructions for your model, how it works. Okay, and then it has... Um, the option to lock in place. These pieces, again, like with an air fryer that you can remove, that you're using for your cooking part, are dishwasher safe, wash them in the sink with warm soapy water, however um, you prefer to do that. Okay, a great thing about your multi-cookers is gonna be using them, again, shortening that time. So having a chart that tells you this one specifically came with this model that gives you an idea of how long, what is the ad adaptation I need to make? Because this is something that's a little harder, you know, with the air fryer, I showed you, I could just pull that drawer out, check it and put it back in. This needs to keep the lid on it. Once we release that steam, you're kind of done. You don't want to have to start over. So having a good idea of how long those things need to be in there is very helpful. Okay, so like this talks about doing your asparagus on the highest pressure level for about a minute. Do your quick release, take it out and it's done. Okay, so it's to cook something in a minute, we might could do that in the microwave to get it warm. Okay, but again, you're looking at a different texture and a different type of thing. This gives you some options you know maybe i forgot to put what i wanted in the crock pot before i left for work i need to cook it a little faster that's something that this could definitely be helpful for the recipe like i said that i included is pinto beans over cornbread you cook your beans in your instapot and you take them out and then you can either mash them or just leave them whole that's what my family usually prefers serve them over a square of cornbread and there's a meal Okay, these are done with ham hock, but you could definitely do a meatless version uh, for that. Add your seasonings, your spices to your taste and cook those in your multi-cooker. Again, they're gonna come in a variety of sizes. So thinking about what would I need to feed a family, this is not a bad size. Okay, you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't overfill it. That's one of the things that can definitely, if you feel it, you know, oh, well, this, I can go to the top, pack it up, break it off and stick it in there. It's not going to cook. Okay, the pressure is going to come in there, but you're just not going to get the quality that you're expecting when you do that. Um, and it also could risk clogging things up into that steam valve because there's just too much in there 
and it can't get around it to do what you need to do. Um, I said, you need the kit, the cooking cycle needs to complete before you open that lid or take that lid off because that's definitely going to affect the quality of what you're trying to cook in your pot. Uh, so like I said, you want to follow the instructions on your specific model, learn how to use it to your best benefit. Okay, so I'm Mindy Turner with the Curry County Cooperative Extension Service. This has been part two of our small appliance quandaries. Next time, we're going to talk a little bit about slow cookers, some of the things that you can do with that. And then we're going to talk about some of the essentials that you probably should have in your kitchen, even if you don't have all these fancy newfangled things lying around. If you'd like to receive a copy of our newsletter, go to our website, curryextension.nmsu.edu. Click on Family Health and Wellness Request Newsletter. As always, you can give us a call or stop by the office. We would love to visit with you. I hope you're having a great week, and I will be right back here next time.